grades it got. I'm pretty excited. Currently, it does not do this overcharging thing anymore. It's sitting right at 13.9 volts. Could not be happier. And the windows are up because my AC, for the first time ever running this car, is ice cold. I cannot tell you how much that's worth in the state of Florida with a heat index of like 110 degrees. That's honestly what it's been averaging for the past, uh, I don't know, week, week and a half. It's been miserable. Uh, but if you can't tell, there is an RPM six-point roll bar behind me. Uh, I currently have the door bar out on this side right now. It's sitting over here on the floor. But uh, powder-coated white RPM six-point roll bar with removable door bars. So now I can bring it to the track. I can actually be safe, be protected in the event that something were to go not as planned or not as ideal. Um, super happy with that. Uh, among that, you know, and the AC being fixed, the number one culprit, like I mentioned uh, in the beginning, was this alternator overcharging issue. So the the alternator, it used to surge and it was really weird. It was like, it would go from 12 volts to like 14 and a half. It would make these massive fluctuations. And I couldn't ever really figure it out why. I never really looked too deep into it. But uh, the guys at P1 Garage located in Sanford, they specialize in Vipers. They're, they're incredibly smart. Uh, they did something that I never really thought of, and if I had thought of it, I probably would have been too afraid to try it. So to rule out that it, was, it wasn't the computer, which is the AEM Infinity that I have in the car, they unplugged the AEM, they plugged it back into the factory computer, and they confirmed that it still did not charge with the factory computer. Now on the Dodges, there's no regulator built into the alternator. The computer is what regulates the voltage. So the computer says, hey, this is how much voltage I want to see. It has that set, that signal wire that sends the alternator and the alternator charges based on that command from the computer. Well, the factory computer didn't do the same thing. So it's very unlikely that both computers would have the same issue. So you rule that out. They started to do a couple continuity tests, checking resistance between a couple wires. They found that for some reason, the, the signal wire for the alternator was one pin off in the harness. So I think whenever whoever installed the AEM installed it, you have to, it's, it's a piggyback, but I think they, they were in there doing something and they, they misplaced this pin by one pin. So it was actually in the shift selector pin of the harness and not the actual alternator signal pin. Uh, my point is, the car is running great right now. I just picked it up. Uh, once we get on the toll road, I'd like to do a little bit of a pull. So one of the intermittent issues the car was having was in the middle of a pull, it would experience what most would kind of consider a boost cut. Now, boost cut typically isn't not really just like you're losing boost it's typically something like your your spark is being cut or fuel is being cut which causes it to fall on its face uh, and people just call that boost cut on any really boosted application so I'm curious to see if it doesn't do that now because one of my suspicions once I realized under heavy load the the alternator uh, gauge would spike and it seemed like the voltage wasn't being regulated is the AEM has like a an over voltage protection so if it senses too much voltage it'll start pulling power it'll cut spark it'll do everything in its power to both protect itself and the engine so I think my suspicion this is my theory is that because of that issue it was having that's what was leading to my boost gun so I'm hoping that's the case uh, I don't know for sure, but we'll find out here in a bit. If it doesn't do it at all in the couple of pulls I do from here to the house, then maybe that's it. Maybe that was the smoking gun. That's what caused it. If not, then you know we'll have to dig into something different. Maybe it was. Maybe it's something in the tune. Maybe it is hitting. Uh, it's going over its target boost. Uh, there is a Mac valve in here. We have it targeting six pounds at most for the most part. It's allowed one psi of creep into like seven pounds. Uh, beyond that, though, it will cut fuel if it sees a value higher than that. Um, my God, I cannot tell you how happy I am, though, about this cold AC. Oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, but in other 
billet pulley just as preventative maintenance to avoid any type of catastrophic failure of that pulley. Um, went ahead and <coughs> also went ahead and got an OEM key, which I've never had. The key that I've had for the longest time is actually just this like little rinky dink regular generic key. The factory Viper key is really cool. The head of it looks like the head of the logo, which is the Sneaky Pete logo, uh, the actual Viper. And I've also never been able to lock the car anywhere I've gone because I never had a key fob. Well, ViperParts.com had one stock OEM key fob left and I bought it. They programmed it so now I can actually lock and unlock the car uh, when I go places, which to me is huge because if you've always wanted a Viper and you never had one, uh, you know, you may have been like me, you may have been like, man, Vipers are super cool, uh, and you know a good amount about them, but you don't know everything there is to know. Well, I can tell you, I did not know that there was no keyhole on any of the doors, right? There's a keyhole for the trunk, which does the pop, the rear glass, it pops the glass, but there's no keyhole for the doors. So if you do not have a key fob, you are not locking the car. That's the, the door latches are electric, kind of like newer Corvettes. And maybe newer Corvettes don't have keyholes either. I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. So, uh, but anyway, I can lock the door now. I love it. I'm super happy. I love this roll cage. Super, super happy with it. It's, uh, in, in addition to it making the car a lot safer, it's also added like a fair amount of rigidity to the car. So now, take the car to the track or all across I may be maybe able to actually uh you know feel the car being stiffer. All right let's get on it. Running great. 